Is it just a song you guys made up or what? No. Okay, let me see here. Cheyenne loves Peter Pan, don't you see it, Aaron? So funny. One of you guys will pick up on one on one story or one movie, and the other one picks up on another one. Cheyenne loved Peter Pan. You liked it okay, didn't you, Hunt? This is a new book that we have today. Today is February the uh, 4th. You know what tomorrow is? No. Scotty's birthday. What's Scott? Scott, your brother. Uh, and, um, Scott's up there. Yeah, Scott's up and I think he's going to be 32 years old. My God. Oh, yeah. Mama's brother. No, no, it's Scotty Sutton, your the one brother. Works at the, store. <clears throat> the ones that works at the store. Your brother the one at the that store. Sage? Yes, the one that had the sage, that's right. Ah. It's his birthday tomorrow, but we're gonna have a party for him on Saturday. We have to ask I see if mom has put together a party for him on Saturday. Good. Then I won't have to go to school. Well you won't have to go to school on Saturday anyway. Hmm. That's good. Good, that's that good. Was dark. <clears throat> and it was dark. All right. It was dark, but Cheyenne, let's read this book now, sweetheart. Yeah, but I'm looking at that book in this book. Okay, well, you sure we can't look at this book now? Because that one we already recorded, and we can, we can look at that and read that one again another time, but this one is called My Mama Says There Aren't Any Zombies, Ghosts, Vampires, Creatures, Demons, or Monsters, or Fiends, or Goblins, or Things. It's a long title, isn't it? Look at that title page. You just go on reading and reading and reading. Hunter knows the title page, don't you? This is, this is the main title page. This is called, you know what this is called? The small one. When you first open the book, this is called the small title page, and this is called the main title page. And you see, the reason is because it's a big main drawing, bigger type, bigger everything. Okay. There's another title page. Now, that was a dedication. The lady that wrote the book, she said, it's to my very own Nick who helped me write the book. Because, see, she has a little boy, just like this boy, and his name is Nick. And Nick says, and look at, here's a little boy. He's looking out the window, and what does he see outside? Uh, a plant guy, a scarecrow guy. Oh, he's really weird, isn't he? Do you like him, Shay? No. You don't like him, huh? Yeah. I That's wouldn't what, marry him. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't think so. He's pretty grizzly looking to me. It says... My mama says there isn't any mean-eyed monsters with long, slimy hair and pointy claws that go scritchity scratch, scritchity scritchity scratch outside my window, right out here. See, there's no monster out there going like that. <laughs> Hunter's eyes just turned big as saucers, and he pulled Daddy's hand right back in off the window. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> You're still red-faced from our wrestling, Mr. Mister. Let me see you. We have all been wrestling. You guys, both of you beat Daddy up. Didn't yeah. you? But I tried to save you, and I... You did. Cheyenne, you're such a girl. You try to save Daddy. You don't want Daddy to be hurt or to, or to cry out or anything, do you, my princess? Mm -hmm. so to, or to be beat up by the Molloy. Or to be beat up by Mr. Hunter. No, who or jumps on me and table. pounds me and does all these awful things to Daddy. Well, or, I mean, all the lawyer people. All the lawyer people, that's right. You guys are both going to save Daddy from those lawyer people Daddy's dealing with, aren't you? Yeah. Get the bow and arrows out. Oh, honey, we can't shoot the people. <laughs> Daddy told me to say. I told Hunter. We had a talk about it today. He can't shoot. Hunter thinks it's a good idea, too. You can't shoot people. Then we'd really get in trouble. Why? No, no, we don't solve problems that way. I think you guys may have watched a little too much TV. We, don't, we do not solve our problems that way. We don't hurt people. It's wrong to ever hurt anybody in any way. I don't want anyone to Product. You don't want anybody to hurt but your daddy. I, don't want I know that. You to give him any, I don't want you to do, give him any of the money. Well, I don't know what we're going to have to do in that Maybe regard. Maybe we could just go bank and hide some money. <laughs> well, that's a simple way to do it, too, honey, but we'll have to see. Daddy will work it out. It won't be bad. You don't worry. I don't When's want it going to be over? It'll be over in just a few more days. On my birthday? No, 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 not on your birthday. Your birthday's a long ways away. It's only a few more days, and then it'll be all over with. Okay? I want it over right now. You want it over right now. Your daddy wants it over right now, my man. Anyway, well, let's go back to the book, because we've got books to read tonight, some good ones. 
It said, but yesterday my mama said I could have some cream cheese on my sandwich because she said, she says, I couldn't have any cream cheese on my sandwich because there wasn't any more. And then, way in the back of the refrigerator, way back there, under the lettuce, in back of the jello, uh, I found some cream cheese. So sometimes even mamas make mistakes. And my mama says that a vampire isn't over my house and his red and black vampire cape and his vampire fangs. And there he is looking down. Look at that. Look at this. And here's, here's Nick looking out the window of his house, just like our window, looking up. Hunter doesn't want me looking up. And outside on the roof, what's there but a vampire floating over the house. <laughs> But, let's see, I've got the right page here, okay. But how can I believe Mama when she said that my wiggly tooth would fall out Thursday and then it stayed until Sunday after lunch? You had a tooth that have fallen out, haven't you? I had a tooth. You've had several tooths that have fallen out, and what happens to them? They got rolled back in. They grew back in, they're coming right back in, aren't they? And once, Mama gave me 19 cents when yo-yos cost a quarter, so sometimes even mamas make mistakes. And on certain nights, when everyone's cozy and sleeping, all of a sudden, I hear a thing in the yard. And you know what? You know what it says as it goes oozing along? It goes oozing along. It says, Nick, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> but my mama says it's positively not. Mama says there's no things outside that are coming to get me. But what's Nick doing here? How's he looking? Oh, I'm scared. He's looking like I'm scared, isn't he? You think so too, Shy? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be scared of that. Me too. Yeah. And this is, says at one time he had to carry a grocery bag. He stopped at the market. Yeah, that is two of that. No, it's just showing. It, it looks like it, honey, but it's showing what happened each step of the way. It's the same boy. They want you to see what happened here. Well, when we stopped at the supermarket on Friday, my mama told me to carry the bag with the eggs. And I said, it's heavy. It's too heavy for me. Oh, you can do it, she told me. I can't. You can. I can't, mama. Yes, you can. I can't, Mama. You can, she told me. Uh-oh. And look at, he tripped over this lady's shoe, and that's how there got to be scrambled eggs all over my shoes. Because he tripped, he went, oh, and the bag of groceries flew up in the air, and the eggs all fell out and went, and the lady whose shoe he tripped on, oh, she was mad, and obviously, sometimes, even mamas make mistakes. Aww. And sometimes, in my bunk bed, I start thinking about the fiend that sneaked in under the bed. And he's sniffing around for a boy to eat. To eat. And I'm the boy that he's sniffing. Oh, But my mama says that there's no fiends have sneaked in here. There's no fiends in our house. But why did she scold me for leaving my skates on the sidewalk? And those were Anthony's skates. I remembered to put mine away. But mama's saying, why did you put these roller skates out there? That's a bad thing, Nick. And once she said that I hadn't flushed the toilet, and it was Alexander's. So sometimes even mama's make mistakes and my mama says that a tall white ghost that goes <coughs> from a hole in its mouth isn't hoo hoo hooing in my closet <coughs> what's he doing he's scared he's scared isn't he yeah why because there's a tall white ghost in his closet that goes, Hoo! there's no such thing as ghosts, are there? No, in our house. 
Not in our house. And this morning, though, she made me wear my boots, and then it didn't rain or even drizzle. And once I asked for chocolate nut, and she brought me back rum raisin ice cream, so sometimes even mamas make mistakes. Oh, but he's get what's he doing? Riding a horsey. He's riding on a merry-go-round. No, he's riding a horsey. See that thing though there? I think that's a merry-go-round. Uh-oh. My mama says that a zombie with his eyes roll back in his head and his arms out stiff and his skin as cold as ice. She says he isn't clonking up the stairs. Clunk, 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 clunk. There, Cheyenne's making the clunking sound on the wall. She's doing sound effects, aren't you, Zubie? Hunter's doing it on the bed. <laughs> But how can I believe Mama when she told me that Holly's middle name was Susan and Holly's middle name's really Jane? And once she said I wasn't when I told her I was going to be car sick, and so sometimes even Mamas make mistakes. He said, Mommy, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to throw up. And she said, No, no, you're not. And he went, Oh, yes, I am. Blah! And he threw up. All over the car. All over the car. Everybody throws up sometimes. I threw up. Yeah. Yeah, I threw up. Yeah, you threw up. Was I threw up in a restaurant? Yeah, well, everybody does, honey. Once in a while. You're sick. Up in the in the car too. Yeah, well, you weren't feeling good, were you? Yeah. No, no, restaurant is. It was like that one where we had that muffin, that bookstore restaurant. Oh, Hunter, you even remember that? That wasn't too. Four. That one I was five. Well, that was several months ago, my man. That was up in, uh, where was it? It was somewhere between Seattle and down in Oregon, and we were on the road. We were in a beach. No, wait a minute. We were in that beach town in Oregon uh, where we first crossed over. No, it makes and sound like I remember. Your yep. Sick go away. What makes sick go away? Um, medicine and, like, like those vitamins. Yeah, that can make you feel a lot better. And so, and sometimes you just have to lay down and wait for it to go away. But it goes away, and you get feeling better, don't you? Yeah. We well, don't, like, like, we get tired, we <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's see. What is this book saying now, huh? It says that sometimes in the dark, a demon is switching his spidery tail and waiting. He's waiting for someone. Who could it be? And he's laughing. He's going, <laughs> which could give someone goosebumps in summer, but he isn't there. Mama says to me, there's no such thing as a demon with a spidery tail. It's not there. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, Cheyenne's going to hit the book. But how does Mama know when she still doesn't know how to drive me to Christopher's house without getting lost on the way? She tells me, zip your jacket up, but she can't zip it either, so sometimes even Mamas make mistakes. And I'm sure I've seen a goblin slinking out of my dresser drawer with a sack on his back to take me to goblin land where boys and girls eat Brussels sprouts and they never get a birthday. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mama says. There's no such thing as a goblin in your dresser drawer. Is there one? Uh-oh. Do you see eyes? There's no such thing as a goblin, is there? <laughs> this is silly stories. But, Monday, Mama said she put my crayons up on the shelf and she said, just use your eyes, Nick. You'll find them. I can't, Mama. You can. Mom, I can't. They're not here. You can. I can't. All right, I'll find them, she said. Not very nicely. But guess what? She couldn't. Mama couldn't find them. So sometimes even Mamas make mistakes. My mama said that a creature isn't reaching out his hand to pinch me, or squeeze me, or push me, or squeeze me, or ah! What kind of a monster is that? 
But that's not really a monster. That's really mama's, like mama. Do you think it is? Yeah. Well, sometimes even mamas make mistakes. Ah! But sometimes they don't because it wasn't really a monster. It was his mama with a blanket over her and she was hugging him. It was not a monster. No. No. What do you think, hun Shaner? Mm -hmm. Good story? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Shy? It was a good story. A good story? Mm -hmm. Should we read another good story? Oh, you want to go night night now? No. <laughs> nah. We have time here to write a big, I think we got time to read this one. This is called The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And so this is also kind of a ghosty story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It says, To Hunter on your fourth birthday, love Tony, 1990. Tony got in, and Hunter, you said that she, she got you another book too? Yeah. You even remember that, huh, my boy? Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, you don't forget anything. Well, what this book says, now look at here's Ichabod Crane. Is he a funny looking guy? Yeah. And what's he doing? He's walking around. It looks like his eyes are closed. It looks like his eyes are closed, but I think they're kind of like this. Nice deep walking. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I think you can still see. He's just reading his book and he's looking down. It says in the Catskill Mountains many, many years ago, there was a peaceful little green valley called Sleepy Hollow. And one day, a tall, skinny stranger came to the village there. He was an odd-looking fellow, and he resembled a scarecrow from a cornfield. Whoever is that? one man asked. Shh, whispered the neighbor. He's the new schoolmaster. So he's the teacher. Now, what's your teacher's name? Mrs. Hanson. You have Mrs. Hanson. But the people who went to... Oh, I mean Mrs. Hanson. Mrs. Hanson. What? But the thing is, Mrs. is that... The thing is, is that the people who live, the kids who live in Sleepy Hollow, they have this guy for a teacher. Not that thing. Yeah, it's, they, they have him, Zigabod Crane. This peculiar-looking school teacher had an even more peculiar name. It was Ichabod Crane. And he was popular with his pupil, pu pupils and was especially kind to those whose mothers were good cooks. Often he visited his students in the evening, and oh, how the stacks of food disappeared then. It was a delight to cook for a man who ate so well, and who said thank you with such style. And he was admired by everyone. And so see, this lady cooked him this chicken, and he's so happy, and she's presenting it to him, and he's going to eat it all up. Well, almost everyone liked Ichabod Crane. One person who did not admire the schoolmaster was Brom Bones. From the very start, Brom didn't care for Ichabod Crane. Brom was big and strong, and he could outride and outride, wrestle and outtrick anyone. I think this guy's kind of a bad guy. You know, I don't know. And now Brom suspected that the schoolmaster was very superstitious, and so he went into the school late one night and turned things upside down. And sure enough, when Ichabod entered the room the next morning, he cried out, But he's oh. a bad guy. Yeah, well, he says, Oh, no, all the goblins in the county must have had a meeting here. So, see, Ichabod thinks the goblins did it. Um. Well, one day Ichabod met Katrina Van Tassel, the beautiful daughter of the richest man in the valley. And one look at her stole his heart away. But there was another whose heart pined for Katrina, and it was Brom Bones. He doesn't like Ichabod going with the pretty lady, does he? Yeah. Well, now, Ichabod spent endless hours dreaming of Katrina. Indeed, his thoughts bounced back and forth between Katrina's beautiful face and her father's piles of money. Why, sighed Ichabod, if I could win the hand of Katrina, I would have the most wonderful wife in all of Sleepy Hollow, and I'd be the master of the Van Tassel farm. And so, boy, he would like that idea. He wants to marry her. And Katrina flirted with both Brom Bones and Ichabod Crane. Brom grew more jealous as his new rival of his new rival every day. But each time he was about to get his hands on Ichabod, Katrina appeared. And Brahm said, <laughs> I'll get him one of these days. Uh-oh. Well, when Halloween night 
finally arrived. Farmer Van Tassel gave a huge party, as he'd done every year. And Katrina had sent Ichabod a very special invitation. And so when Ichabod arrived, Brom Bones was already there. And he went straight to Katrina's side and presented himself with his courtliest bow. Good evening, my dear, said Ichabod. Katrina just blushed. Uh -oh. And the orchestra stuck up a happy time. And in a moment, Ichabod and Katrina were gliding across the floor. And all evening, they swung and bounded and swooped and danced around the room. And Brom Bones just sat in the corner and he scowled and, at the merry couple. For even though he wanted to cut in and claim Katrina as his own, he knew he couldn't dance as well as Ichabod Crane. Now, Ichabod was definitely the man of the hour, and Brom had to agree that it was so. <laughs> there must be a way, he thought, to put this schoolish scarecrow of a man in his place, but how? Look at all the girls are liking Ichabod, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And what does he think about it? Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't like it, does he? Mm -hmm. Well, it says, during a break... In the music, Ichabod knocked over a salt shaker and had to throw a pinch of salt over his shoulder to ward off the goblins. And now, careful as he looked, he could never be completely relaxed in any f situation because he was terribly superstitious. And Brom suddenly grinned. <laughs> He's got an idea. He's going to do something, isn't he? I know. It's Halloween night said Farmer Van Tassel. Someone tell us a ghost story. And so Brom Bones jumped at the chance, certain now that Ichabod was mortally afraid of spooks of all kinds. And Brom said, Ha ha! At midnight the ghosts gather for their nightly jamboree. And the worst one of all is the headless horseman who haunts the old graveyard. When the clock strikes twelve, and then the clock, oh, excuse me, then the clock did strike twelve and a chill went down Ichabod's spine. He was scared. On Halloween nights, thundered Brom, the horseman haunts and hunts for a head to steal for its, from its owner. But he can never cross the old hallow bridge. Your only chance is to get there before he does. Beware his sword has chopped off many a head. And to show what the horseman would be, Brom grabbed the head off the scarecrow and thrust it out at Ichabod's face. And Ichabod looked panic-stricken. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? Look at this. Quaking with fright, Ichabod thought of the spooky ride home alone. He hated to start down those deep, dark hollows. And finally, when all the other guests had gone, he knew that he also must go. And he gave his thanks to the Van Tassels and mounted his old horse. G -g 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 Good night, he called in a quivery voice. And off he rode into the deep hollow. And the woods grew darker and darker. And the night sound seemed to be getting louder and louder and closer and closer. And Ichabod tried to whistle, but his throat was dry. And the wind was blowing through the broken reeds and made an eerie sound like someone breathing down the back of your neck. Faster, old horse, faster, he urged on. But the horse wouldn't go very good. And so what is Ichabod doing here? He's pushing him. He climbed off the horse and he's pushing him, isn't he? Huh? Well, suddenly an owl hooted. Hoo -hoo! Hoo! And the poor old horse bolted frantically. Ah! And look at this, the tree limb looks like what? Like a hand. Anyway, the horse saw the owl and just went. Brrrn! Dun, 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 and started to run as fast as it could with Ichabod on his back. And just as it was running down through the hollow, ah! <laughs> Look. 
What's that? What? Ichabod managed to stay on the horse, but just as he approached the graveyard, a towering figure on a fearsome black horse loomed before him in the darkness, and the monstrous horse rose up on its hind legs with a sword and with a sound of thunder, and it was the headless horseman. <laughs> I won't get it by you. And Ichabod kicked and flayed at his poor old horse, and it ran into the darkness out of control. And again and again, the headless horseman slashed at Ichabod, swinging his huge, sharp sword. Whish, whish, whish. And Ichabod ducked down in the saddle, and the sword sliced through the air just over his head. Oh, no! Oh, no! The only thing... Oh, if I can just reach the bridge, thought Ichabod. And for the bridge... For at the bridge, the horseman's power would end. Faster, horse, faster! Oh, please run faster, faster! And so Ichabod shrieked as the old horse scrambled frantically towards the bridge. Look at it! And as they neared the end of the bridge, Ichabod glared back to see the fiend was still following. And to his horror, the horseman rose up in his stirrups and hurled something through the air. And Ichabod stared, completely unable to cry out, for coming, coming directly at him was a grinning head. Yes! And the morning after Halloween, the schoolmaster was gone. He was missing. He'd never missed breakfast before, but today he did not show up. And later that morning, someone found Ichabod's cape in his hat near the bridge and not far away they also found a shattered broken pumpkin and no one could say why that was there but there was no sign of Ichabod Crane in fact he was never seen again Ichabod Ichabod left Sleepy Hollow and he went away now why did he go away because he was a ghost well, no, Ichabod was the... He wasn't a ghost. Ichabod was the school teacher. Why did he go away? No, um, because, like, he, like, hurt him and he become the white well, ghost. Well, he doesn't want... He doesn't want it... No, he ran away because he doesn't want that headless horseman to ever get him. And he was scared of the headless horseman. See, so he went away and see? never came back. Oh, I see. Here's the next page. Sorry. Shortly thereafter, Brom Bones told Katrina Van Tissel he took her for his bride... And the hollow settled down. And as for Ichabod, well, some folks swear that he was spirited away by the headless horseman. And others say that he just moved to another county. But every once in a while, a traveler drops by the inn to say that he's heard the voice of Ichabod Crane wailing in the sleepy hollow moonlight. Oh, help me! The protagonist is the main guy. So who's the protagonist? Yeah. And what's his name? I don't know. Ichabod Crane. Now the antagonist is the guy that causes the problems, isn't he? Yeah. The headless so horseman. the headless horseman. Who you know who the headless horseman really was? No. Him. Um. He just put on that cape. It was Brom. He wanted to get rid of Ichabod Crane, and so he pretended to be a headless horseman. But was that a real sword that he had? Yeah, it was a real sword, but he wasn't really going to hurt Ichabod Crane. He just wanted to scare him. Ah! Huh? That a costume. Yeah. Well, that's what some people say, and some people say he just moved away. I don't know. Which do you think is true? Look at this. We've almost used up all of our tape. Oh, no, that's a really silly little book, isn't it? Yeah. Snoopy's Book of Shapes. We know these shapes. Cheyenne, let's see if you know the shapes here. So, let's have a contest, Spike said in his letter. I've counted five shapes. Can you do better? Well, we're going to search for some shapes. So they started looking around, and they found the shape of... What's that shape? Um, a kite. Okay, but it's a diamond. A diamond. A kite is a diamond shape. A diamond. And so they Can jumped off. Sure. What is it? Um, it's a diamond. <laughs> I it's a know. It's a kite. That's right. And what is this shape? Um, a, a star. star. There, you both did it at once. And what's this? Um, a, a ball. Which is also a 
circle. Circle. Right? Yeah. And so here's, look at this. Here's Snoopy playing tennis, huh? Now this is a... Oval. Oval. It's an oval, oval Cheyenne. Yeah, See? oval. And this is a... Heart. heart. That's right. You have many hearts in your bed, don't you? And this is a... I forget. A rectangle. No. A rectangle. Tri. Tri. Triangle. This is a triangle. That's right. Look at that. A triangle. And this is a... Square. Square. Just like a square birthday present there, huh? Then this is a... Um, paper. Paper. Yeah, but you had it right a minute ago. Rectangle. 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 And so here we go now. Let's see if, if Cheyenne can do it. Um, diamond. A diamond. Square. No, square. no, no, no. Rectangle. Here's Rectangle. square down here.